because this is on there pretty good. Oh, shit. Maybe it's not on there good. Alright everyone, uh, I know it's been a while since we've uh, made an updated video on the 240, but we've made a lot of progress on the car. Um, it's running. That was a very exciting moment. Um, needless to say, I figured out what the problem was. I made the new piece to cover up the hole in the intake. I didn't even think about it at the time. For right now, I'll walk you through some of the things I found um, while wiring the car, just to give you guys a heads up what to look for um, and to keep an eye out if you're going to do this route instead of buying the harness. Um, it's not that difficult, it's pretty straightforward. So here we go. All right, the first thing I want to go over real quick is the fuel pump wiring. Uh, I should have saw this while I was going through all my stuff, but I didn't really care to read it at the time. Um, so when I got all the car, when I got the car powered up, uh, the fuel pump wasn't kicking on. Uh, this is the Nissan wiring diagram for the fuel pump. So you can see the power comes in from the battery on the power side of the relay. This is the main fuel pump relay. Um, and then it goes to the ECU, which the ECU acts as the ground. But for the GM, um, we have the power comes into the relay from the ECU, and then it's grounded. So you can see the difference. There's no ground on the Nissan side. The ECU triggers it and acts as the ground. So when you wire in your relay, I'll show you here. Uh, don't mind the mess. I'll, I'm going to be putting all this back soon, but... Um, so I took the main power wire that came from the battery and grounded it just here temporarily so I can make sure it runs. And then this black and pink wire gets connected um, to the ECU. And where I did that is from this F3 plug here that gets connected to the Nissan um, ECU. If you look in here, this is that wire, the black and pink wire. So I cut it. I cut it back here. I labeled it, cut it, and then I tied it in um, to the rat's nest over here, or wires to the ECU. Um, I am going to be cleaning all this up because it is an absolute disaster right now. Um, but for the for the sake of getting it running, uh, I didn't want to go crazy getting all the wires cleaned up just to have problems and have to go back and take everything apart. But now that I know it runs, this is what I'm going to be working on right now. Um, finding a home for my relays. I have to build my switch panel on the dash. Um, I got to get the uh, OBD2 port fixed. And I got to get the check engine light wired in. But from this plug, there's wiring diagrams on the internet. You can look it up. Um, there's a few wires. You'll see I cut this is a check engine light. Um, I got to. <coughs> I still have to put that in the to the ECU and then wire the data plug. Um, here's your tack and what's this engine temp. This is a main power line. I didn't end up needing this. And the fuel pump. That's basically it. And then the only other problem I've noticed is the blinkers don't work. So I don't know. I'm thinking it's because I don't have everything hooked up. Um, I mean, the, the, I have the dash plugged in, but even with the dash plugged in and the dimmers, it didn't seem to make a difference. Um, but all the lights work, the brights work, so it's probably just one wire somewhere that I'm not that I'm missing or something. But that's about it. I gotta hook up the horns. That's easy. It's just one wire. It's these two right here. These green ones. These green wires are the horns. They've run out. You gotta fish those through the firewall. Um, I still gotta do the uh, O2 sensors, but the exhaust isn't fully built yet, so I can't do that yet. But I don't really, I don't really need that to finish and get all this nice. Uh, the reverse wires, obviously, I gotta hook up. Um, what's this? Oh, the fuel gauge. 
I gotta connect that in too from the ECU. Or maybe not. I'm not sure. But that's where I stand right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all the wires hooked up. To get it wired into the car, like I said, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. There's only a few wires that you need off this plug. Um, my fuse box down there, I gotta find a home for the relays. Um, the one other big thing, well, if you're gonna make your own harness, is finding a place for grounds. I kind of have grounds scattered all over the place. There's one there. Um, there's a couple down there. There's, I made a temporary one here. And then, like I said, I gotta ground that fuel pump relay. Um, and uh, so, finding a good home for grounds is important. That gave me a lot of problems in the beginning because um, I just had it temporarily hooked up here. And that didn't work at all. So, like, I ground that so it's nice and metal because that's very important. If it's on the paint, it's not gonna work very well. Um, and then. As far as engine grounds, um, I've seen a lot online. People have a lot of grounds everywhere. I mean, this is the only, this strap ground is the only one I have right now. It just goes from the block to my firewall. Um, it didn't seem to have a problem. I mean, it started right up. Um, this is where I have my uh, the oil filter. I have the lines running down to the oil pan. Got my power steering all hooked up. This is the low pressure line. This is just fuel hose for now. And then I have uh, the Russell Power Equipment power steering hose with the fittings down there. Um, the uh, pressure sides, an M14, the returns, an M16 by 1.25, I believe it is. Um, and then this is an M16 that goes to the pump. And then I bought the turn one fitting. You can see it right before the, the blue AN fitting. Um, to reduce the flow to work with the Nissan power steering rack. And then right now I just have the alternator mounted here. Uh, the hood's not going to close. As you can see it's extremely high. Um, and then I relocated this pulley here with a longer bolt. If you use a 6 inch bolt it should be long enough to get it in. And then you'll just have to shim it. It's kind of hard to get in there but let's see. I can't see. Um, yeah. So I just put, um, this is a piece of squared stock that I had laying around, and some washers. I put a washer in there to space it out. Um, it needs to go in a little bit further. You can see where it used to ride. And then it's right now it's flush with the back of the pulley. So I need to take, uh, take probably maybe this washer out or cut down my piece of squared stock in the back and push it in. But for now it's fine. Um, the one other problem I'm going to have is this pulley from the power steering pump is going to hit my fan. So right now it hits hits this shield. So I mean this is just a cover for that. So I might either just notch this out or just take this off completely. But I mean it just hits just by a little bit. So it'll clear my fan but I'm going to have to do something with that. And then the other big, well not really a big problem, but the other issue was uh, the fuel rail was hitting the um, the coil pack here, so you just have to bend this. Just be careful. Um, this is just temporary, just so I can get it running. Um, like I said, I might either I want to use this because it has the gauge on it. I'm just not sure how well it's going to work with this fuel pressure regulator and filter. And I mean that's pretty much it. You know, all the wiring, all the wiring in here is done for the most part. I just got to clean it up, put it in the, the sheathing, cover it all up. Um, I'm going to end up pulling the engine out anyway, so I'm not going to go too crazy, but I'll get it where it needs to go. And then the other problem I'm going to have is the intake. I got to figure out a creative solution for this because it's going to hit this pulley. This is the stock tensioner here. The um, the inlet for the water pump I got to cut down so I can put this so I can lower this. This is just I just threw it on there quick. 
Um, and then for the throttle, I just had to move. There's an, actually there's a tab that's on the stock, um, the throttle here. I just cut that off and it actually gave me enough clearance so the throttle will actually work. Um, and I know I've seen people say that the stock S14 cable is too short, but <clears throat> this is this is my stock cable, and at full throttle, I still have more than enough room. It's, I don't have an issue with it hitting here, and then I just made a custom bracket to hold it. And then the line, I'll, I'll tuck away somewhere nice. And then the other thing is, especially with the 5.3s, because they, they tend to get a lot of oil in the intakes, uh, is to make sure you have a catch can. So from the driver's side head, there's already a built-in check valve into the valve cover. And then right now I have it going um, to the there's a there's a nipple on the intake right here, and then from the throttle body you have it coming out into the passenger side. I'm gonna eventually I'm gonna have to put a catch can in there because I don't want the intake in full of oil. I mean this one already has a little bit in it, <clears throat> but I know with these five threes it's important to make sure you have a catch can on this. So you're not sucking in oil into your intake all the time. But that's, uh, I mean, there's not too much to it, really. This is the cover I made. Um, I think this was like 16 gauge steel or something like that. It's pretty thick. So it should be, it should help. So I don't have that, uh, that same problem as before. Um, and then the steam lines, I have this one open. As you can see, it's still open. I got to run that. To the overflow for the radiator, which I, I have somewhere over here. I have a little uh, Chase Bays can that I'm going to use for that, and then run the vent in for the uh, for the radiator as well. So I still have a lot to do. I got to run the brake line still. I have to get those all fixed up. Um, I might just reuse the same setup I had before for now. This is where I had I just had a T here to connect the front to the rear from the master cylinder. Uh, I still got to run the clutch master cylinder. I still have the stock one in here. I got to make an adapter to get that in there. That should be fun. I'm looking forward to doing that. Not really, because it looks like it's going to be a pain in the ass. But I got to make sure I bleed that. So I'm going to wait, wait to do that until I'm actually ready to hook up all the lines. Um, but like I said, I guess still got to pull this out. <clears throat> I'm going to pull the engine out again. I got to put the clutch in. I gotta order the drive shaft, so I still have a little bit to do, but we're getting there. It runs, that's the most important thing. Um, and that's pretty much it. Oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. Oh my god, my heart's fucking pounding right now. That was insane. Whew, I gotta watch that back. <laughs>